and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 234. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Wills. Good day, Norman. Good day to you too, man. How are you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic and wonderful on this nice, blustery fall, 40 degree, windy. <sighs> Someone get me a jacket. <laughs> I'm so confused. Is it hot or is it cold? Oh, right. Uh, Celsius. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's basically like, it's like, uh, five degrees outside then, man. Five degrees. Ooh, that's in the starting. Yeah, and, uh, and, and windy. Five Ooh. degrees and windy. <laughs> oh, not fun. Not fun. But at least you're indoors recording, so that's good. Oh yeah, I got the, I got the heater on, I got hot cocoa, and I'm surrounded by friends, uh, uh, on the internet. <laughs> so. At least you got a warm glow from the monitor. What are you talking about? This thing's LED. This thing generates no heat whatsoever. <laughs> now, if we're going to talk about my computer, this thing's a powerhouse. It basically is its own furnace. Yay, at least you won't get cool. Play Overwatch. He'll heat you up in more days, in more ways than one. Oh, no, no, no. Overwatch? No, no. If I want to really heat myself up, I load up Crisis. <laughs> no, I- I'm talking about the rage that you have playing with me. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Yeah, oh. I don't know why, but we always have bad games. It's like, what? Oh, we get we get terrible people. We we get DCs. We get people who are like Symmetra on attack. <laughs> Symmetra on attack does not. Yeah, Symmetra on attack doesn't make sense. On defense, yeah. Okay, the thing is, there are certain classes that do work better for certain things. But you can have a Widow on attack. You can have a Symmetra on attack. You can have a uh, pretty much all offense on defense because the best offense is the best defense. Mm. But the thing is, you actually have to be good uh, at the yeah. character is the first stipulation. <laughs> <laughs> That's also true. That's also true. Uh, I've been grinding my way through just um, getting to know some of the characters. You like this Halloween update? Oh, yeah. I, I do like the sprays that they have um, of the Halloween sprays. And the Halloween skins, oh wow, those those are cool. I really like that mercy one. I mean, I, I like the sprays, which is something you probably would never hear from anyone about Overwatch. I like uh, the sprays. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, 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 just the uh, they have it from Diva in a cardboard <laughs> mecha outfit yeah, yeah. to Grumpy Soldier seventy six to Anna's carrying her daughter on her shoulders. Yeah. Damn it, Gabe, it's a spray. How can a spray knock me in the gut? <laughs> uh, reasons. But uh, that's besides the point. Um, If you do, like, um cute stuff, like Anna in a box, maybe you like ponies in a box. Ponies in a box. Yep. It sounds like a lead-up to a very bad fan fiction, but please continue. Oh, there's that one about Rainbow Dash, but we're not talking about that no, one. No, no. <laughs> No, 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 no. We're talking about no. the other Rainbow Dash in our box, the Funko Power Ponies, and it seems that they're appearing at GameStop. What? Like, right now? Yep. There's a GameStop only a couple blocks away! Get me one, please! Well, while he's doing that, I'll <laughs> read up on oh, the news. Oh, right, right, we got a show to record. Okay, I, I can wait. Aww. I can wait. But, anywho, um, it looks like GameStop are selling this. And I do remember going to Australia, and I'm not 100% sure if it's a GameStop. I think it's a GameStop, I do remember. But uh, I do remember that this kind of places, they sell the random merch, like the um, Five Flags at Freddy's, or even, the, you know, the random things, like gaming. Right, random gaming, yeah. The, 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 how GameStop has evolved, and I'm using very ironic quotation marks there, evolved, um, from uh, Games Den to Funko Land to then GameStop. Um, it used to be just all about games and used games, and then it started really going, okay, I'm not going to... If I start talking about GameStop, I'm never going to shut up, but it's a lot different than it was back in the 90s when it was Funko Land, when it was just about games. This uh, whole merchandising avenue, it... It's uh, how there's a whole bunch of stuff that is game-related, but not actually games in their store. In fact, actually, the GameStop in town here, where I, where I live, I'd say half of its stock is not actually video games. Half of its stock is gaming merchandise. And peripherals. 
yeah, and peripherals or, or, or nerd merchandise. It, it's it's like a hot topic light. <laughs> well, honestly, I don't blame them because the way that video games are now, it's an evolving trend because used games, they're there, but the way that gamers are now, we have changed. We have the computer and we have Steam. Nobody's going to GameStop. I'm putting in quotation nobody is going to go buy a PC game over there. They're just going to use Steam. Or if they're a Blizzard guy, they'll just buy it on their website if they want the best game. There's Steam, Steam Origin, mm. GOG, Humble Bundle, um, and there's a bunch of other, uh, those are the ones off the top of my head, but there's a bunch of other online distribu- distributors mm-hmm. that uh, are basically being competition for GameStop, and GameStop and its horrendous practices are basically, you know, Becoming a dinosaur at this point. I mean, they'll, 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 they'll edge out for a while, but the physical market is becoming a lot less, uh, profitable compared to online distribution. Honestly, I'm not one here to judge or say anything because personally I haven't been to GameStop, so I haven't experienced their uh, bad practice or whatnot. But from my- You are blessed! <laughs> True. But from what blessed. I understand, GameStop is one of those places where you can just buy a physical copy of a game, hopefully in wrap, and also buy accessories like a controller or a power cable or whatever it is that you want to look for. And having this kind of pony merch from Funko or those Funko vinyls at the GameStop is one thing that they kind of have to kind of evolve because if they keep at their own ways of selling video game and use video games, they're not going to make a profit. Remember e- or the old uh, competition? EB Games. EB Game? You know, EB Games. I remember. Yeah. EB Game was in Australia. Yeah. Uh, uh, EB Games, Games Exchange. There was one that was like Extreme Games or something that was by Blockbuster that failed horribly and it was hilarious. Yeah, but still, having GameStop of all places doing these kind of things, hey, it's not bad. It's something they... Can put out there. But it's surprising. Yeah, true. It's surprising because, you know, uh, again, it, it's Hot Topic light. This is something you would expect to pop up at Hot Topic first more than any other place. I, I think Hot Topic has it. I, I don't know. I, I personally don't know. But on a good news, these things are selling at $7. Oh, I could, I could pick one up, but ooh, there's a chance it'll get spike. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, at least if you get spike, that's good. Make sure you don't get the henchman pony. Yeah. Maybe I want the henchman pony. I, 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 all of all the collection of ponies I have, I don't have a bad guy. I just have all the good guys. Maybe I need a bad guy in there. It's just like, meh, yeah, see? <laughs> uh, probably. But eh, GameStop aside, I do hope that you guys out there have a good experience and don't get cheated and whatever it is. Like, I personally don't know, but I do hope for the best. Yeah, probably knowing the GameStop employees, they've replaced all of the figures in there with spike ones just to spite everybody. It's like, Mah, we went through all the boxes. <laughs> if you get a good person who labels everything, oh, you want a spike? Here's a spike. Oh, you want a Meriduel? Oh, here's a Meriduel. What, whatever it is that you want. Yeah, didn't some people do that for blind bags once? Yes, it's the code number, but now it, they have an open window so you can just <laughs> shake them to the window and see what you get. <laughs> cool. Yeah. But talking about games, um, what do you think about those uh, match three kind of games? Oh, you mean the bejeweled craze that has oversaturated the entire casual games market? Yes. <sighs> Let me guess, there's a pony version now. Indeed! Of course! So this means now that because there's a pony version, that means I'm going to be forced to play it. <laughs> uh, Darn you, bejeweled! I tried to get away from you, but you keep pulling me back in. I won't force you to play it, but um, they have this game out for a while now, but now it's officially on the market, and it's made by Backflip Studios and Genera, and in association with Hasbro. So yeah, it's a match three kind of game where you match two puzzle pieces and explode them to get points and finish quests. For example, like collect two purple blocks or collect 16 green blocks and so on. And get the bird down or get the book down, whatever it is. It's those kind of games. And it's one of those free-to-play, pay-to-get stuff. 
Mm, great, the Candy Crush model. Uh, not, not really. Dear- not really. I've played the game. Um, I oh, okay. downloaded and played the game. And the way that this game works is, I don't mind it so much. It has, mm, I wouldn't say that it's hard, but it has that curve where if you make the wrong move, you're screwed. <laughs> So it's kind of like life then. Oh, yes, that is also true. But um, this one is a bit generous. You start off with five life max. If you finish a puzzle, you don't have to spend your life to go to the next um, stage. If you fail that level, you can spend one life to um, get it recharged. And it only takes up about two hours or so to get one life. It's just one of those, hmm, I'm bored. I want to play something and kill time kind of games. It's not recommended that you have a binge play on this one. You can, but it's not recommended. But it's one of those games where, huh, this is fun. I can kill time with. Ah, a kill time game, like on the bus or something. Yeah. Okay. And since it doesn't eat up your life point, if you um, successfully successor level so you can just go on and proceed if you're good you can finish the game all without spending a life get good bro <laughs> yes um annoying things are like um gold coins you get daily and have to buy it's just not needed but it's just annoying to be there and one other thing that i find annoying is the player icon You have Celestia, Luna, the main six, and so on. But I don't know why or what, but you kind of have to purchase them to get a fixed play icon. And that's about four bucks. And that gives you another thing like um, powers and a few goals. It's kind of a quote-unquote starter pack. Oh, so you have to pay money in order to unlock more of the game. No, 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 no. From... What I understand is just power ups and play icons. Oh, okay. Basically, play icons is kind of yeah. I I have it, don't have it. It doesn't really matter. I'm just playing the game. I'm not concentrating on that. If you want to, it's there. If you don't and want to have fun with the game, you're still able to. And the game is called <laughs> My Little Pony Puzzle Party. I do recommend playing it, but I do not recommend you spending cash on it if you can avoid it. I have not met a uh, free-to-play game that I have spent money on aside from <clears throat> League of Legends. Lo- mm-hmm. Oh, wow, I've been playing um, Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I play that, too. It's just I, I spent money on League of Legends back years ago, and then now I haven't spent any money on e-games in a long time just because I realized, wow... That's a lot of money gone. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking all about... The, all the hamburgers I could have gotten, man. All the hamburgers. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I'm thinking... Seriously, for me, I'm thinking about buying those Blizzard cards just to get those <laughs> Blizzards. No, um, just to get those Overwatch safes. Oh, you you really want those Overwatch Halloween skins, <laughs> yes! don't you? Yes! <laughs> because I miss out on the Olympics, the Summer Games, and like, oh, God, I miss them out. Oh, wow, I feel like, mm, not going to get those things anymore. And when the next Summer Game coming? Four years? Uh. Four years. Well, uh, what they could do is they could just make it another summer event, but uh, probably, I mean... Uh, we'll, 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 we'll save the Overwatch talk for later. But yeah, so games. Yeah, pony games. Woo! Another pony game. <laughs> yeah, at least this will is free to play. You can try it out for yourself and judge it for yourself. I, uh, I for one would say that, hey, give it a shot. I, I'm giving it a shot and I'm enjoying the game for now. Probably once I had a week with it, I'll report in next week just to let you guys know how I really feel about the game. And we'll see. Right now I'm on level 40. So, yeah, it's not that hard. Yeah, give it a week. Then we'll tell us, how do you feel? Yeah, yeah. Speaking of us feeling things, how do you feel about the news that M.A. Larson and maybe Haber are not going to be involved in Season 7? That's sad. Or Season 7 news. Yeah, that's Uh. sad. Oh, wow. Like, I do like Larson and his writing style. He's a very interesting guy, and he's a very... Well, let's just say that he's entertaining. And also, don't forget to buy his book, Pandoral Academy, available on Amazon. Buy his book. (laughs) Buy his book. Yes, indeed. Free plugs. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, but, uh, we're not even being paid for this advertising. I know. <laughs> anyway, but, uh, but it is sad to see Larson and, Heber. uh, Haber not, not, not be a part of it, but, uh, the, the, it's a large crew mm-hmm. that has been working on this for a while, and I'm at least confident that they'll continue the show in the same heart. Of course, you know, I'm still worried that, oh, crap, don't let the director they get now be someone who's, like, you know, a total bootlicker for Hasbro and be like, okay, now we're going to get rid of the main six, we're going to get rid of Starlight Glimmer, we're going to make a whole new season of a whole new cast, uh, and uh, Spike. Yes, Spike is the main character. Okay, Spike. Hey, what's oh, wrong with stupid Spike? Outcome. Let me finish. Let me finish. And he's a dog. It's Dog Spike. Oh gosh. Honestly, there's nothing wrong with Dog Spike, but wow, that is just. Oh, why don't you just make pound puppies then? Well, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to bring back pound puppies. <laughs> pound puppies left, and now they want it. So they want it back. Yeah. Uh, wow. But and, honestly... th- and, th- and, th- and then throw all it out. Then another show appears. A human steps through the portal. You ponies are all annoying. <laughs> Oh, wow. And has a black t-shirt with jerk written on it. Exactly. Oh, uh, actually, you know, the show I'm starting to describe actually sounds really cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. Uh, but honestly, Larson not being on is, well, he could be busy or, well, I'm thinking he's busy because of the book and movie he's going to do. Oh, so yeah. that thing. And Josh. Well, his tweet is pretty interesting. He says, never say never. Wait, you didn't. Um, never say won't, I guess. Maybe it's like he hasn't been asked to come back or maybe he's open. Who knows? Yeah, maybe he's, maybe he can't say anything because NDA is probably. Larson is straightforward not. So yeah, maybe, maybe in the second half, probably. Who knows? But Larson's still a cool guy though. Oh yeah, I, I, it's just, it's probably he can't be pulled in so many directions at once. Mm-hmm. He's only one man. Indeed. He, he can only attach wings to so many things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so true. Uh, but still, we'll have to wait and see until the second half and see how it goes. And talking about next year, uh, you remember that movie? The My Little Pony movie? Uh, the one I'm extremely hyped for? Yes. Yep. One of the voice actress, Emily Blunt, um, recently did an interview and, well, she described her character. And I quote, I did My Little Pony, though I'm a nasty pony in that. Which is kind of fun. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. So, she's playing a really bad character? She's playing an antagonist or a villain. Cool. Mm-hmm. Or she's just playing a, a, a nasty pony, as in... Real nasty. <laughs> nasty Westies. Uh, yeah. Probably, I don't know. Um, I did remember that Sivatu says that he's being in the movie too and playing a bad guy. Sabretooth? Yeah, remember? Um, X-Men Origins, Wolverine, oh. Sabretooth. Wow. M. Uh. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, 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 now all we need is like uh, Danny DeVita to show up. Ah. Oh, there we get the classic <laughs> trifecta. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, um. no. We'll see. I can't wait to see this movie. I'm really excited for it. Yeah. I, I, I know it probably won't happen, but I'm still holding out that they get uh, uh, Patrick Stewart. <laughs> uh, Patrick Stewart and his magical Earl Grey tea. I know, but, but seriously, though, if they got Patrick Stewart and John DeLancey to be in a scene together, I would die. But John DeLancey said he was not invited for the movie. Aww. That's a shame. Yeah, I know. Uh, but well, talking about episodes or movies, whatever it is, um, you seen Top Bolt yet? Oh, Top Bolt? Yeah, I saw Top Bolt. You notice this one? Okay, um, I'm gonna make a disclaimer here. Um, this is gonna be a bit of a spoiler for you guys who haven't seen Top Bolt yet. Warning! Right. Spoilers ahead! Do not venture any further in this podcast unless you want to be spoiled. Well, it's a minus spoiler, really, but I'm guessing most of you already have seen it because this episode comes out on Monday 12th or Tuesday, whatever it is, like by the time this episode comes out, you have already watched the episode. So that's what I'm assuming. Plus, And, episode- and if you haven't, pause this. Pause this and go watch the episode now. 
And if you can't watch the episode because they've taken it down off of YouTube, go on Daily Motion because no one takes anything down from Daily Motion ever. Sometimes. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, but with disclaimers aside, Papa, there's a character named Angel Wing, and someone as the director, Big Jim Miller. Is there any kind of story behind Angel Wing? For whatever reason, she really seems to stick out. She actually stuck out to me because her voice um, sounded different. It mm. didn't sound like a, a voice actor voice. It sounded like just a regular person speaking. Mm-hmm. And Big Jim replied, she was played by a young girl as part of her make-a-wish request. That's her OC. Oh, okay. So sort of like uh, that, Um, uh, what was the name from... Uh, the episode with the giant fair where uh, Fluttershy was sold in... <laughs> yep. Yeah. The one where Fluttershy was sold into slavery. <laughs> no. Uh, you mentioned that. Uh. But yeah, Stellar Eclipse. So, oh yeah, okay. So, uh, okay, that explains it. She was an OC. Well, it's a very nice OC, actually. I love the color scheme. Yeah, I mean, she sticks out a bit, but I don't know. I can see it work for the show with her color. It's not bad, but... Hmm, how, what's the what, what's the word I'm looking for? It sticks out because her color scheme doesn't really match the universe, but her whole color in terms of the way her tone works in her mane and tail, kind of, well, you can make it work. Oh yeah, yeah, just, just streaks, but, uh, actually the color scheme, I mean, is just fine, but it's the, it's the, uh, the hair highlights, which are kind of unique. Hmm, yeah, yeah, I can see that. And it's kind of cool of Hasbro and DHX to work their butts off to just insert an OC in the show and make it a okay. Yeah, yeah, and they, they did a good job, and uh, it, it's it's really nice for them to do for these kids. It's very nice. Yeah. And hey, uh, you know the thing you got to realize too—if that was her voicing her OC, um, the sound people do a really good job, and sort of the sound directors and making the person who has obviously not had any. Um, professional voice acting work sound professional enough to be de- very decent. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- that just uh, goes to show you how go- how a good sound editor and a sound director can make a can make anyone sound good. And a studio, <laughs> a sound booth studio. You have to remember oh, that too. I, I'd love a sound booth studio. Same here. Uh, but with that, that's the news for this week. But I want to try something new here. Um, if you listen this far, thank you very much. But the new thing I want to try out is called First Impressions. And what this means is that we're going to kind of talk about the newest episode. It's not a full review review. It's kind of what do I think of today's quote-unquote episode or this week's quote-unquote episode. And well, um, if you don't want to hear it, I guess I'll see you next week with another new episode of the MBS show, but if you want to hear what we think about this week's episode, please stay on. If you stayed on, welcome, and well, Wills, let's start with you. You've seen this episode, right? Yeah, I saw this episode, Top Bolt. Ah, a, the, the uh, joke of which, the uh, Top Gun, <laughs> yes. which um, they even made a direct quote at the end of the episode. <laughs> Oh, you can be my wing pony any day. Heck, you can be mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. But oh gosh. Uh, now, now, now I'm just thinking of all the pe- uh now I'm just thinking of all the ponies flying around to danger zone. <laughs> Someone already did it. But um <laughs> let's try not to spoil like uh, that's that's available for the review show. This is just kind of first impressions and what do we think about it? All in all, first impressions of this, uh, that would have to be the Wonder Bolts are shown in a nice light for once. That's, <laughs> that's enjoyable. And I think this is the first time I've seen Spitfire be cute in a long time. <laughs> and for me, I personally like this episode because it's one of those lessons that's kind of hard to pull off. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's where no one is technically wrong in this instance. It's just a lot of hard truths. Yeah, and the way that they pull it off here is kind of interesting. I, I do like it. And at the same time, too, with the character Angel Wings, like, wow, first they use Angel. I don't think they've done that before, right? In the show, use the word Angel. No, Angel Bunny, yeah, my bad. Yeah, Angel Bunny, yeah. But uh Angel Wings, though. 
Yeah. <laughs> but still, that, I, I think that's put aside because Angel slash Wings not together, you know what I mean? But that's the yeah. point. Um, Which is even funnier because of, you know, how she's been the guardian angel for another character. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I do like her introduction here saying like, oh, uh, just to let you know, you two are my favorite ponies directed at Twilight and Rainbow Dash. <laughs> 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 Oh gosh. Well. But that was so cool. That this episode and to your comment about uh Spitfire being nice and cute, I think she's always been that way. It's just that, you know, in recent episodes, you know, it's been more so she's been the antagonist or or at least a catalyst for the ant- antagonizing incident. Yeah, but, uh, I don't know if I don't want to bring this up because everybody talked about the whole thing. Remember with the Rainbow Dash thing. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> There's been debates and war happening because of that thing. And honestly, my thoughts were right. Spitfire here is just like, yeah, this is what I do. I have to be tough, tough love, you know. She loves it. She loves yeah. being. She loves the unlikable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was actually one of the jokes. It's like, but you love yelling and blowing your whistle. I know. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, but yeah, actually, the, the, the best part is because uh, this particular episode has a bunch of callbacks to uh, Wonderbolt Academy. Mm, true that. Uh, so if you like that episode, you'll actually get to see a lot of uh, history from another perspective, basically. True, 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 true. And well, still, I do enjoy this one. I, I do highly enjoy this episode. Um Personally, we can't talk more about it, but first impressions is kind of, yeah, I do like it. It's one of those episodes where I don't mind watching it again, and I think I might have to just to get a full review on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, I remember something, and this is the final map episode for the season. So yeah, we got um, Pinkie Pie and Rarity, Fluttershy and R- R- Applejack, Rainbow Dash and Twilight. So, yay! Yeah, everybody got a map episode, but there were less map episodes total. Yeah. Hmm. People say that, well, the show say that the map was broken until Twilight and um, Starlight fixed the map. So, yay. Yeah. Darn it, Starlight, another thing you broke. Yeah. At least she fixed it. Yeah, took him half a season to fix At it. At least she fixed. It's just, a, it's, just a, it's just a magical map tied into the entire life-flowing magic of Equestria. I mean, why, why don't they just get the guys from uh, IT tech service? Have you tried turning it on and off again? <laughs> uh, that would work. But anyway, <laughs> uh, that's it for the news and the new segment. I do hope that you guys enjoy it. And please do comment below and tell us what you think because we could improve or can improve it in some shape or form. If you like it, do let us know. If you don't, tell us about it and we'll stop. Give us your critiques, please. We need your critiques. Yes. Creative uh, criticism is uh, is invited. What's the word I'm looking for? Is needed? No, not what needed. What's the word? Anyway. Creative criticism is much and thoroughly appreciated. Yes, thank you. But anyway, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. As for me, I am at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. Recently, I bought a shirt from Japan, and it cost me <sighs> an arm and a leg. Yeesh. Oh, so you had to Edward Elric it, huh? Yep. Aha! Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, uh, that's sad. Yeah, that's especially sad. that doggy and her girl. Yeah, especially five days ago was October tenth. Never uh, forget. I thought it was eleven. I don't 11? know. I remember oh. it's eleven. Hmm. But October tenth is the anniversary for MLP. So this is what the seven. Yay! Happy birthday, MLP. Yay! Happy birthday, MLP. You've ruined my <laughs> life. Thank you. And also enriched it in many ways. <laughs> yes. Otherwise, I wouldn't have met you, dorks. Oh, indeed. Uh, but what about you, Wills? Where can they find you? You can find me at the last bastion of human hope, which is DeviantArt, apparently, and wills.deviantart.com. 
If you like reading stories that never update, you can read mine at fimfictionuser slash willison.com. And if you like stuff about D&D updates, silly stuff about the interwebs, and good music, you can check out my Tumblr at willison.tumblr.com. All righty then. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ponyvilive.com. Links are in the show notes. And also please subscribe to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there you get to hear Civil Quill act. Very silly and funny. Inane. I was going to say inane. Funny is funny is subjective, man. <laughs> well, true, but at least you get to see his first impression on a review that <laughs> he hasn't done yet. Uh, he has a lot to catch up on. Oh, so much. And also Sapphire Heart songs. You'll get to hear her moan as she feels out of place in a group of old people. We're old. She's young. Them young'uns. Oh, she's always negative. I mean, come on. Has she even liked a single episode yet this I think season? I she did. <laughs> I don't remember what. One. She liked one. I, honestly, there's a few I don't remember. Uh, she's a grump. Oh, if, she's a lovable grump. If you say so. And you can catch me trying to control the mayhem. That is the NBA show review. I don't know if I could do it. And sometimes you can get guest hosts. Like Will's. Will's going to be on. I am? Yes, you are. Yay! I can finally spurg out in front of my idols. I thought your idol was the other guy. No, my, my, my idol is the, the, is, is the camera guy. The one operating the camera. Oh. Oh, okay. But anywho, uh, please subscribe to that for that bunch of insanity that's going to happen. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I have been Will. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the NBS show. See you guys later. Toodles!